Hi, I'm Eric from Webster Telescopes. A customer called us earlier today and he asked how long would it take to set up one of the 14-inch uh, uh, telescopes and I said, ah, you know, a couple minutes and, uh, you know, he says, well, exactly and I said, you know, just a couple minutes but I think he uh, thought I was trying to be cute with him or something uh, so we thought we would uh, make a video and show you uh, just how the telescope assembles uh, it's snowing outside here in Michigan and uh, the garage was just so dark we couldn't get the uh, camera to work so uh, this is the official Webster Telescope uh, laundry room and we are going to uh, show you how this all goes together it's a, just a little bit different than our uh, C-series scopes uh, possibly just even a little simpler uh, this is the D14 and a half uh, it's got a really great Zambudo uh, optic in it and it's going to a gentleman, uh, Robert Croyne. So if you ever uh, meet up with Robert, you can say, hey, I saw your scope on the internet. But uh, enough of my yakking, and let's put together a telescope. Each of the uh, pairs of trusses are marked which way it goes. This one says encoder. It goes on the encoder side. We put the encoders on the far side of the scope, away from the focuser just to uh, make sure that you don't kick it or uh, you know hit it with anything it, it's out of the way on the far side this one says logo it goes where the Webster logo and serial number plate is this one says front so it goes on the front of the scope and finally this one says focuser it goes on the focuser side so you put those in This is the UTA, or upper tube assembly, and that just drops on here onto four little brass pins that grab it, just like that. And you tighten each of the four up. You don't have to make them real tight, just snug them up. And just like that, once those are tight, we tighten the eight clamps here on the rocker box, or mirror box actually. And that's it. That is one completely assembled. Uh, 14 and a half inch uh, Webster telescope. Uh, usually the tail rad's pretty close uh, once you've taken it apart. I would uh, collimate it with a laser or a cat's eye uh, auto collimator and then uh, you know just fine tune the tail rad but chances are it's going to be pretty close. Uh, we'll plug it in to the battery here. We engage our azimuth and we engage our altitude just with two levers all night long you can change them you know if you're in the Virgo cluster and you just want to free wheel through it you certainly can you do not have to uh, worry that you'll lose your spot in the sky when you re-engage the clutches for both axes you'll be back tracking again uh, and the go-to will run you don't have to align every time you disengage uh, so there she is she's alive And just turn in like that. We don't have a lot of room because we're uh, trapped here in the laundry room. But you get the idea how the uh, system works. If we were, uh, you know, outside, if it wasn't snowing, we would just do a two-star alignment. Uh, so we might pick, you know, Beetlejuice or something easy in the uh, winter sky. Pick one other star, and uh, that would be it. We'd have full go-to, and this would all run. So I think that's everything. Uh, you can see how it works. I didn't time it, but it's certainly uh, a couple of minutes, I think, is an accurate amount of time uh, to claim that it took to put together a Webster telescope. Thanks for watching.